So, question one, part A. Find the first three terms in ascending powers of x of the binomial expansion of open bracket 2 plus x over 2 close bracket to the power of 6. Okay, first thing I would do for any question that asks for a binomial expansion is do Pascal's triangle. So you should be aware of this. If not, we can just do it over here. I think I'll just leave it here on the right hand side and do the work on the left. I'll just refer back to this. So the questions that we're going to be looking at today will not exceed the power of 7. So I'm only going to go up to, say, the seventh row. But you can go as far, far up as you want. And then all you do, remember, down the left hand side and right hand side, you just stick with 1s. And in the middle, you're just adding the two previous numbers above it. So for example, 1 plus 1 would be 2. And you're always going to have 1 and 1 at the side. The more numbers you get, the more addition you'll have to do. 1 plus 2 would be 3. 2 plus 1 would be 3. And then you've still got the 1 at the end. Bear in mind, this is not the first row. That's, this is regarded as the first row. That's just the that's just the top. That's just the pinnacle of the triangle. This is regarded as the first row. That's regarded as the second row. So we've got 3, 3, 3. So 1 plus 3 would be 4. 3 plus 3 would be 6. 3 plus 1 would be 4. Again, in the fifth row. 4 plus 1 is 5. And then 1. And 1, 6. 15, 20. 15, 6, 1. And the last one. But squint, but it doesn't matter. We're just going to leave it there and we're going to do the work on the left hand side and I'll refer back to this. Find the first three terms in ascending powers of x of the binomial expansion of, so we've got 2 plus x over 2 all to the power of 6. So the rule is if you are dealing with a binomial expansion to the power of 6, it means we're going to have to use the sixth rule. And you think, that's a lot of terms. We've got 1, a 6, a 15, a 20, a 15, 16. But the question just says the first three terms. The first three terms in ascending powers of x. So we're just going to use these three. So how do we use it? How do we use these three terms here, 1, 6, and 15, and apply it to 2 plus x over 2 all to the power of 6? How do I do that? So you have to write it like this. Take the first term. So that equals to the power of 6. We're going to start with 1 multiplied by the first term here, 2. I always put it in brackets. I would do, remember the dot just means multiply. 2 to the power of 6, the highest power. Always start with the highest power and then decide. The first term will be the highest power. This will be the lowest power. Multiplied by x over 2 to the power of 0. Plus, next one, we've got 6. So the, these coefficients here, they don't have the power. The power is not applied to these coefficients here. The power only applies to what's inside the brackets, okay? So each time, the, the, if you add the powers together, they should always give you 6. Always give you what the power is. Okay, so 6 plus 0 is 6. Next, we're going to descend. So it's going to be, it's still 2 again. 2 to the power of 5 times x over 2. 5 plus what is 6? 5 plus 1. So again, same thing. 15 multiplied by... 2 again, always go back to the start and you're descending, it was 6, now it's 5, now it's going to be 4 and if the first term is descending, x over 2 will be ascending. So it was 0, it was 1, now it's 2. So 1 multiplied 2 to the power of 6, again you'll have your calculator in the exam, 2 to the power of 6 is 64, anything to the power of 0 is just 1, so it's 1 times 64 times 1 is just 64. That whole first term is 64. Um, next one. Six, 2 to the power of 5 is 32. Times 6 is 192. 192x over 2. 192 times per, 2 to the power of 5 is 32. Times 6 is 192. Multiplied by x is 192x divided by 2. And you can simplify that. We'll come back to that. And then the last part, we've got 15 times 2 to the power of 4, which is 240, multiplied by x squared. So remember, it's not just the, the, the numerator that's squared, it's the denominator. x squared, and then denominator, 2 squared would be 4. Okay, And we can simplify that. 
64 would just remain the same. What's 192 divided by 2? That's 96x. What's 240 divided by 4? That's 60x squared. And that's your final answer. Okay, so it's four marks for that question. And don't waste time in the exam doing f figuring out what this term is and this term is and this term is because these other four terms that's going to take an extra f five six minutes to get through all that make sure you read the question it says the first three terms in ascending powers of x make sure you just do the one and the six and the 15 okay it's important a lot of people do that a lot of people just do the whole row so just the first three terms and uh, just be careful with the, the addition and the multiplication and that's it okay part b so part b says Use your expansion to find an estimate for the value of 2.05 to the power of 6. So any question that says use your expansion or hence, anything like that is referring to the answer from the previous question. So I'm just going to leave this up here just now. 64 plus 96x plus 60x squared was the answer from part A. Um, but we have to do something else first. We have to deal with this 2.05 to the power of 6. So all that means is that you're going to have to equate the inside of the brackets. Okay, 2.05 to the power of 6 equals 2 plus x over 2 to the power of 6. And that just means that we can, because the two powers are the same, we can effectively eliminate the powers because the two bases will be the same. If something, if something to the power of 6 equals something to the power of 6, the two somethings have to be the same. The two bases have to be the same. Okay, so let's solve for x. Because once we've solved for x, we can substitute it in here. That was the whole point in using this expansion. So what you want to do um, is take the 2 over to this side and leave the x over 2 on the other side. So I would probably just write it like this. x over 2 equals, I was take the 2 over here with 2.05 minus 2. So you've got x over 2 equals 0 0.05. x equals 0 0.05 times 2, which you can check in your calculator, but will give you 0 0.1. So that's not the final answer. It says use your, use your expansion to find an estimate for the value of 2.05 to the power of 6. So we're going to have to use this by substituting in here. So therefore, 64 plus 96 times 0 0.1 plus 60 times 0.1 squared equals, you can do it bit by bit, or you can put the whole thing in the calculator if it's quicker. Anything times 0 0.1 would just be divided by 10 plus 60 times 0 0.1 squared is 0 0.6 so your final answer is 74.2 and that was just two marks for part B so the bulk of the work was done in part A you had to get to this stage here the rest is, is you know it should just flow from there okay just remember you can eliminate the powers because if they equal each other, if, 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 the, if 2.05 to the power of 6 equals 2 plus x over 2 to the power of 6, therefore this has to equal, that the two bases have to equal each other. And from there, it's fairly straightforward. You're just rearranging to get x on its own. Once you get x on its own, a lot of people finish it at that. I think that that's the final answer. That's not the, that's not the end. It says use your expansion to find an estimate for the value. It didn't say find x. You have to use x to find the value of 2.05 to the power of 6 which, if you substitute correctly, check it in the calculator, it's 74.2. Okay? Six marks for that. And that's not too bad in the exam. Okay? Right? Next one. Okay, so question two. Find the first three terms in ascending powers of x of the binomial expansion of 2 minus x over 8 all to the power of 7 for four marks. Okay, so this is very similar. The first part of this question is similar to the, 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 the first question. So it's the power of 7, we're going to be using this rule here, and it says again the first three terms. So we're just going to be using 1, 7 and 20. Remember in the exam you don't want to be wasting time, even though it says the power of 7. That does not mean you have to use every single term here. That's a waste of time in the exam, okay? Especially the further down you go, the more, you know, the, the higher the power, the more coefficients you're going to have to use. Here we just have to use 1, 7 and 21 careful with that. Other than that, it's the same process as last time, so let's go through it. So the first term will always be 1. 
we've got one multiplied by it's a two again so two remember the first term will be descending second power will if uh, first term will be descending the second term will be ascending so if it's descending at the start at the top which would be seven multiplied by it so be careful here the second term is not x over eight it's negative x over eight okay make sure you put the negative in the bracket as well that's gonna be the power of zero okay what seven plus what would be seven zero next one so it's not one it's going to be seven multiplied by two again this time it's descending so it's going to be power of six multiplied by negative x over eight ascending so it's power of one okay plus normally you would do this horizontally you would just keep going along here but to to you know accommodate pascal's triangle i'll just go underneath so we've had one and seven next one is 21 multiplied by two again ascending so it's eh, sorry descending so it's going to be to the power of five minus x over eight is now ascending so it's going to be to the power of two so on the calculator we've got one times two to the power of seven is one two eight anything to the power of zero it's just one so that's one two eight for that first part okay and for the next part you've got seven times two to the power of six is 448 multiplied by negative x over 8 it's only to the power of 1 so this won't change so as you've got a negative I would just put the bracket in just now so you've got negative 448 which is 7 times 2 to the power of 6 multiplied by negative x so it's negative 448x all over 8 and we can simplify that later okay the negative is going to overpower the positive but just for the time being I'll just leave the back the bracket in just to show you exactly how I got there and the last part 21 times 2 to the power of 5 is 672 negative x times negative x because you have to square the numerator and the denominator negative x squared a negative times a negative is a positive so it's just going to be x squared 8 squared is 64 and we can simplify that 1 2 8 won't change like I said negative will overpower the positive so it's going to, we know it's going to be negative 4 4 8 divided by 8 is 56x don't forget the x and 672 divided by 64 is 21 over 2 and don't forget the x squared okay so again four marks for that question but very similar to the last one the only difference which you have to be careful with is the negative okay I would just force a habit I would still put the positive in I would say it's still plus 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 and only when you get down to the last line you know then I would depends on how many terms there are in this term it's just the first three terms but I would just leave the brackets in always put the plus in but just be careful to have the negative and then at the end you can have the negative overpower the positive where need be okay right, let's keep going so f of x equals bracket ax plus b close bracket 2 minus x over 8 all to the power of 7 where a and b are constants Given that the first two terms and ascending powers of x in the series expansion of f of x are 384 and negative 104x, part b, find the values of a and b. Okay, so like most of these questions, almost all of these questions, like the last one and this one, um, you're going to have to use the previous answer. So I've, I've left that up the top there, 128 minus 56x plus 21 over 2 times x squared. The last question we had to solve for x first, this time, we're going to have to do a straightforward substitution okay because as you can see 2 minus x over 8 to the power 7 was exactly the, the expansion we found in part a okay so i'm going to replace this with this so we've got a x plus b multiplied by not the two terms here but in fact 128 minus 56 x plus 21 over 2 x squared okay and the question was given that the first two terms in ascending powers of x in the series expansion of f of x are 384 and negative 104x find the values of b so the first two terms that means we don't have to go up to x squared okay if you think ascending powers it's going to be a singular term and it's going to be an x term okay i'll show you what i mean probably easier to demonstrate it than, than show you but if you think about it like for example if we're just looking for the first two terms we wouldn't need 
we wouldn't need x squared. The first two terms in ascending powers would be the singular term, as in there's no x, effectively uh, x to the power of 0. You just don't put it in. x to the power of 1, x to the power of 2, x to the power of 3, blah, blah. So ascending powers, the first two terms would be this one and this one, which means we don't need the x squared term here. Okay? We still have to multiply through by some terms here, but I'll show you what I mean. So if we start with the a of x, a of x times 128 would be 128a of x. So typically, if you're multiplying through it, you would keep going and you would say ax times negative 56x and then ax times 21 over 2 times x squared. But because you've already got an x here, this is, going to, this is going to create an x power that's too big. Any x times x is x squared. Any x times x squared is going to be x cubed. So we don't have to go any further here. I mean, you could multiply it, but again, so you're in an exam. These are exam questions. You want to, you know, be efficient with your time. So you don't need to do that because you're just looking for the first two terms. Okay, which means, like I said, a singular term with no x and a term with one x. No squared or three or four or five, just an x on its own, which we have. But if I was to multiply through, so I've only multiplied through this part. I've only multiplied here. But if I was to go here and then here, I would have an x power that's too big. And we don't need that. That's a waste of time. Okay, so the next one, second term, b times 128b plus 128b, and there's no x term there, so that's fine. b times negative 56x would be positive times negative, negative 56bx. That's fine because x is only to the power of 1, there's no squared or cubed or anything like that. But if I was to go further, if I was to do b times 21 over 2x squared, that's going to be 21b over 2x squared, and that's too big. Because again, we're not looking for squares, we're just looking for the first two terms. So that's as far as I have to go. But the question was, given that the first two terms in ascending powers of x, okay, you have to, have to read that carefully, ascending powers of x in the series expansion of f of x are 384 and negative 1 over 4x, find the values of a and b. So ascending powers of x, it means the non-x value will have to be at the front. Okay, so it's just going to be 128b, and then bring these two x's together. Okay, so then you've got plus 128ax minus 56bx. Okay, but ideally you'd like it like this, where everything, where the, the x is, has been removed. Okay, we can see there's a common factor of x here, so I would, I would take that out. Okay, so that's the same as... 128b, I'm taking out x as a common factor, plus 128a minus 56b times x. Okay, and that looks, that looks more like it. So now we can equate these coefficients. Okay, so if the first term is 384, we can do that over here. 384 equals 128b. Obviously, to get b in its own, you're going to have to divide both sides by 128. And if you just check that in the calculator, just to be safe, 384 divided by 128 is 3. If you divide both sides by 128. What about this one over here? We know from the question that it equals 100. That the coefficient of x is negative 104. So therefore, 128a minus 56b equals negative 104. We know from the first part that b equals 3, so we can say 128a minus 56 times 3, which is 168, equals negative 104. If I bring 168 over to this side, it's negative 104 plus 168, so we've got 128a equals 64. Therefore, a equals a half. So eight marks for that question, quite a lot going on. Not only do you have to know Pascal's triangle, you have to know that you're just looking for the first three term for the first three terms here to get part A. You're also just looking for the first two terms in part B. Okay? Um, you don't have to multiply through again, you're gonna waste valuable time if you multiply this, expand this out fully, it's a waste of time. You're just looking for the first two terms, so anything above x 
any, any x squared, x to the power of 3, that's, that's a waste of time, you don't need that. But you have to rearrange it as well. So you've got the singular term and you've got the x. That's almost right, that's almost correct. You just have to take out x as a common factor. And then you can equate them. And from there, that's a bit more straightforward. And a is a half and b is 3. Okay, let's keep going. For mass tuition, in person or online, you can visit the website at analogous.co.uk. The link is in the description.